Let's go live, and I love it, and we're about ready to go on, and it all kicks into the podcast channels first before anything else, because that is the fastest thing that always gets coming, and then, awesome. and as it pops up here on the Facebook, and on YouTube, and on Twitter, we are super, super excited um, to have voices to be heard back in action with my girl, whoop, whoop. You know, we we missed you, so welcome I, you. Come on. I am so happy to be back. Um, you know, I, I've missed being here. I've missed sharing and talking and interacting. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, holding it down. I am back. <laughs> so t- first tell people who you are, people, because I see some people are now shining onto the show. Awesome. Who are you? What do you do? Why she kept? What's with the shirt? What's with that pretty face? What's going on? <laughs> Great. So I am Tamara Randolph. I am founder and owner of Kept. Kept stands for Keeping Every Possibility Tangible. And it's a nonprofit women's organization where we try and help and provide a safe haven for domestic violence victims. So Kept shirt here and my contact info, I think everyone can see it. Um, if anyone throughout the course or even after wants to reach out, my um, email address is within my my little name there. So please reach out. Um, but that's that's me, Tamara. So, you know, Tamara, while you were gone, I had um, a, a beautiful man on out of Atlanta, and he shared, and you saw the show, and it was, yeah. it, it's so powerful, like he said, and we got a lot of people that say, I can't believe two black men talking about being abused, and the, the things that happened to them, but and because we, we don't hear about it enough, and and I think right. those people had talked, they have inboxed me and said, wow, that, I've never heard two black men talk about the, the abuse that they suffer, but we always normally hear about women being abused yeah. and then yeah. you started she kept because of your mom and right. you, the story is as powerful as can be but to matter the whole thing is voices to be heard it's this is a platform for people to give us a call text us let us know your yeah. story anonymously or just to let you know that your voice is here to be heard and we are here to hear hear you and to give you some of those information and maybe, maybe you would just make a decision that you don't want to be in this situation anymore. Right, Tamara? Right. That's exactly right. I think um, it's great that you were able to get a male on that would open, be open and freely talk about that. I know you shared um, your experience as well, but I think we just don't hear enough from men that have experienced any type any type of domestic violence or abuse and oftentimes at least in my experience it's just not a something that they just really openly want to share and more frequently than not it's something that they've witnessed so i've talked to a few men um and males that have witnessed their mom being abused um or, you know, some f- close family member, and that's a part of the domestic violence and abuse that they have, in fact, witnessed. But it's always great to know, and I think that's the beauty in sharing your testimony, because you are letting someone know, like, I'm not out here in this fight alone. There's someone else that's going through the same thing I'm going through or going through something similarly, and we're both figuring out how to get out of this this trial and this, um, yeah, this trial together or at the same time, maybe not together. We don't know each other, but it's encouraging to hear someone's testimony, either how they faced it, got through Mm -hmm. or how they're actively getting through. You know, and, and, and it seems like women are lifted up for being, getting out of it. But yeah. men are not even talked about because that's just you growing up to being a man. Right. And, and, right. and, these, and those words, they're so twisted. They're so twisted. Agreed. And how are we going to be twisted men and yet take care of our queens and our daughters right. if we are so twisted? And then you, then you find yourself 
with this man who's nice, but yet is twisted. And you're like, wow. Because I think that a man or a woman, there are a lot of things that we just choose to not address and, and will, you know, go through whatever. And then just, you know, once we feel like, okay, it's been enough time, then I'm going to just get over it. But that's not, I don't think that that's the proper approach. I think that we have to, you know, kind of get through it. You know, not necessarily everything I don't think needs to just be hurdle. You know, sometimes we got to go actively go through it and actually talk about what's going on, what we've gone through, um, figure out how our feelings and emotions mm-hmm. um, were affected, especially because for your point, for men and women, but, you know, for your point, men, you want to be the proper role model for your daughter or for your child or for your relationship and without you properly addressing or um, acknowledging the things you've gone through you're just harboring all of this stuff and at any moment and at any time it could just come and um, you know come out for someone that doesn't even deserve that so I know I know we've talked about things we show because on this show remember you can give us a call here and please the number has changed so give us a call here 301-789-3174 if you want to give us a call and, and talk about it uh, your voice will be on the air um, we, you don't have to give your name if you want to put it in the inbox on YouTube Twitter or Facebook or any other social media it's either now or later please let us know um, how you could do it maybe we can we will hit you back with some resources and maybe just some help for a guy and to let you know like again ultimately to let you know that you're not alone what are some of those things that women should look out for that's it what you i want to call it a sneaky trigger what's a what's a sneaky trigger like they kind of make you what? What is it? Um, our, I, oh my God! I'm going to tell my age when Arsenio Hall would go. Things make you go. Hmm. <laughs> so what's a what's a sneaky trigger? Yeah, I think one of the sneaky triggers um, is just someone adding um, in a portion of like how much they love you or. Um, you know, they want to, they're basically controlling you, but it's, you know, they're trying to spin it to say, it's because I love you and I just want to be around you all the time. Like, I I wholeheartedly feel like, regardless of the relationship, regardless how many years we've been together, we've been married, I think you still have to be an individual. And someone trying to take that away from you, I feel like is a sneaky... Um, and it's a sneaky thing. Now, yeah. now, now, the pushback, Tamara, you know, is cultural. We have Indian women. I, I think certain customs, and it's tough to talk against the custom wall. Okay. Are being controlled. Right. And I, I, I understand. A really good man in a particular custom who is non-abusive with the woman who is okay with the particular customs that they're in. But there's not many that are that way. Right. And they're able to slide it as you're not being a good... I'm not going to tell a custom you're not being a good xyz culture and that's why that's tough you know i think religion is um religion and custom can be a little tricky Mm. um because you want to you know make sure you are adhering or following or obedient, whichever, you know, you kind of want to use. But does my, so if my, does my, in my religion, am I happy? 
you know, like, am I being fulfilled? Am I able to live? Um, and I, I studied religions in school, kind of minored in it. Well, I definitely minored in it, but um, <laughs> it's just intriguing yeah. to me the way that um, people twist. Yes. Exactly. I, there's, there's, there, there's no softer way of saying it but twist. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the proper word for it. Um, but I don't, I mean, honestly, I think religion and customs and tradition is important. Yes. Um, I think that makes all of us who we are. And I don't think there, you know, for the most part, there's nothing to be ashamed about. Mm-hmm. But I feel like even in custom and even in tradition, does this actually make sense? So this tradition, this is what's been happening for Mm -hmm. hundreds of years, but does this make sense? Does this relate? Can I actually relate? What is the, why are we doing this? You know, when we kind of get to those moments where we're asking those type of questions, um, I think it could be tricky and challenging but I think it's up to each individual to figure out what makes the most sense for themselves. Now, in, in certain customs, in a lot of customs, there are community leaders. Mm-hmm. You can go to your community leader and let them know what is going on. And then that is your safety net. Now, if your community leaders are seem to be always backing the male, then now you have a question against your community. Maybe not your religion, but your community is not keeping you safe. And I think we can address communities not keeping us safe. Yeah, I think I think we can and you know, just depending on the religion and, and how much your community and your community leader dictates what decisions you do or don't make. I think that's the challenging part. Um, for me, I could just speak kinda of personally. Um, I was born and raised a Christian. Um, you know, making sure that I was following what what scripture and quote unquote tradition say and there are certain things that I think is okay as I grow and learn to require more information so I was going to say to question or challenge but I think it's okay to I think it's okay to challenge or and or to question you know I think it's okay to because oftentimes when you're young, you are told X, Y, and Z, and so you've done, and you do X, Y, and Z, but why am I doing X, Y, and Z doesn't necessarily come as part of the instruction. Um, and so I think for me, growing up, it's been, I've tried to make sure I push myself to figure out the why and get the understanding on why am I doing these things as part of my religion, as part of my tradition, and for th- those things I don't understand, even I'm a- either I'm asking, you know, um, someone I kind of trust to provide some um, some instruction, or I'm praying for that for that answer in that direction. But I think for each person, depending on your religion, depending on what traditions and where you feel. Like you can get direction and comfort from. I think everyone kind of chooses a path and chooses the way of information and um, growth a little differently. So, it, it, you know, people need to say something, you yeah. know, and that's where we go back to some of those sneaky signs. Sometimes people just need to open their mouths and say, Hey, are you okay? I don't think you're okay. Well, you may tell me you're okay, but I don't think you're okay. And I want to make sure I tell someone. Now, we all get these, t- in the black community, it's almost like, well, why are you butting into my damn business? Yeah. Well, that's got to stop. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think um oftentimes that can be the case, but I know that there are a ton of people that are looking to their friends, not necessarily their family, but their friends for that solace, their friends for that um advice, encouragement, push, you know, looking for answers, you know. Mm-hmm. And um Oftentimes, it's challenging to be a good a good friend um, because there are times when you know our friends can come to us and they're asking for advice. We give them the sound advice and then they don't listen. <laughs> right, right, right. And then they come back with the same thing, and you, as a friend, you want to say like, "Didn't we just <laughs> talk about that?" I mean, I don't want to bring that up again, but I feel like we just talked about that. But okay, you know, I think it's a challenge to be a friend, but. I think we have to mm-hmm. stick to it. You know, if we love our person, right. we have to. I, For me, I take it as a personal challenge. I love you. And if yeah. I love you, I'm a ride for you. I'm a figure this out. If you're going through, if there's something in my means to do, I will absolutely do it. So, um, you know, one of the toughest questions, and and this is really... It's it's so personal to me on so many levels, and so that's why I'd rather ask the question than to, to try to come up with an answer. If there's someone you know that is going through a situation and you have bailed them out, do you say to yourself, you're going to continue to bail them out? Like, go get them, have them to pick them up, and th- and this is a travel issue. This is not around the block. This may be in several states over. Is d- do you find it as a friend, loved one, family member, whatever, and say that I, no matter what, I'm going to do this, or does it come to a point? Do because some friends and family members they they come to a breaking point, and it is, it is, and it is that okay to have a breaking point? I think it's okay to have a breaking point because as friends, I think we also got to figure out, you know, what boundary are we going to set? You know, like we also have our own stuff. Right, right. Um, But I just, that's why I said it's tricky and it's hard to be a good friend sometimes, especially when, you know, your friend is going through because you want to help them and assist them along the way. But also there's a lot of, baggage that they're dumping and you want to you know be able to sift through the baggage but it can be difficult you know like i got my own stuff <laughs> you know and i'm barely holding on okay and you're bringing this on so i'm gonna try to put this on my back as well but it's hard because no one um, no one wants to be a mule right right yeah but i i mean for me I'm going to figure it out. We, I'm going to drag us both together. I'm going to figure this out. But I, I, that's why I was saying it's, it's difficult. Sometimes it's difficult to be a friend. But um, I think that depending on the situation, um, sometimes your friend is your only lifeline. Right. You know, it's literally nothing else you can do. No one else you feel comfortable talking to or reaching out to. Um, and... You know, I hope as a friend, you're able to, you know, continue to be there for him as much as you can. Because you, your sanity and your well with all is also important. So, yeah. And, and so let's, 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 can we make a chain of this? And, 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 and the question is, is this okay? You have... The, we have a person that we're talking about who's going through troubles, but you know that you know other people that they don't know, and you let them know the situation. Is that telling on someone's business, or is that seeking help for for him, her, or them, or they? Um, I think sharing the situation with someone that you are actively trying to 
pursue help or if you're trying to get help from them for yes. the friend? Yes. Like say like, oh. hey, I know I know you have a resource and I'm letting you know this is a situation that this person's going through and you they can help. They can help. Flat out. Yeah. And so this person is that a is that a sticky situation? Do you think that's cuz I think some people find themselves into having information but they also can't do anything. Yeah, I think I think it could be a sticky situation but you could also solicit the help without providing names, you know. Right. I don't have okay. to say I am, you know, my best friend Dr. Paul is going through X, Y, Z. Right. And, you know, can you help him? I don't necessarily have to give your name, but I can give the, what is happening? Do you think you can help my friend? You know, kind of thing. But I think that that is, that is the point. I think that's also, that's being a friend because okay. there's only, you know, I can right. be the listening ear, but if I can't, provide the actual resource that you need. I'm useless. I need, to, I need to help you f- get to that resource. So am I bringing the resource to you or are, am I taking you to the resource? I think that's the part about being a friend. And I think that's what we need to do more. You know, do. Yes. yes. And, and, and I think that's where I, I, I was glad you said, you know, cause I was thinking, cause sometimes when I'm thinking something, I, I could be just totally off the, 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 the tennis wall. I don't know. And, and, and it doesn't make any sense because people say, well, you're, you're telling people's business. I said, sometimes I think we get stuck in helping cause we feel helpless cause we don't know what else to do. Well, yeah. even if you're in your own mental health, you need help, you can ask for help. Not even for you, but for someone else. It, it doesn't always have to be, I have a friend and you're really talking about you. You can really have a friend and talk about someone else. No, you definitely can. And, and I don't think that everything has to be public. You know, right. like I feel like with social media, um, a lot of people or a number of people feel like it's, their place where they share, you know, kind of a lot of their business. Um, and then they're basically soliciting whatever responses, whatever advice. And I am not an advocate for that. I, I, I don't think I, I, maybe I'm not reading social media enough like that. I just don't think people are talking about abuse. They may be talking. People, about, right. No, they're not, they're not necessarily talking about. I I've never read a post right. public post about abuse unless it was kind of something that was kind of kind of promoted or you know, but not anyone just easily just saying like I I've been abused that type of thing. I've seen people post victory um, you know stories and testimonies, but when they're actively being abused, I don't. I don't see it as quiet. any and and I know that it's one I think it's a level of embarrassment you know cuz I feel like there are a number of women and men that mm. are in situations where they know that the public looks at them this way but at home you know the public looks at them here at home they feel like they're down here and they don't want to convey that this is actually where I am. And, um, but I don't think that to, to my original point, I don't think that that's the place where that should come. You know, I think that publicly you, it's hard for you to be as vulnerable. Um, I think oftentimes it requires a little more intimate conversation. That's where the friends come into play. That's where you find help and um, therapists that you can meet with weekly or however often necessary to help talk you through those moments, um, talk you through gaining that um, that confidence to get out of those situations. It's I've I've personally heard stories of women. Um, 
And because my organization is geared to women, I hear more women's stories. But um, I've just personally heard women that are in situations where they would have never imagined themselves being in. You know, like growing up, I was this, and I'd always known, and I always said I would never let a man treat me this way. I would never let a man hit me. I would never let a man disrespect me, definitely not in front of my kids. And here they are. Yeah. Um, and, but and, I don't, and you I, know, like, I, hope yeah, that, I, sorry, I just feel like women stay there because they are embarrassed that they are there, but it's okay. Like we're, you're still here, you know, we still have, you're still living and breathing and there's still an opportunity to get out and you should seek the help that's necessary. So, you know, and I, you know, being in those conversations with women in those, in those sessions, and it's only afterwards I I have been able to talk with them, and I have talked with only I would think out of the times I've doing sessions with helping people, it's been two women that I've talked with that has never left, even to this day. They just stay with it. They made it work for them, and. Even to this day, speaking of it, holds a big soreness in my throat to say it. And I'm perplexed by it. I am so confused. And all the things they have said, those these two have said, and the reason why they rather make it work for them is because of the embarrassment. And I, do, I, wow, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that I, I mean, I don't know. Our pride is a, is a sinful thing. You know, our pride yeah. can keep us yeah. in situations where we don't belong. Um, our pride can keep us from opportunities that, you know, are ours. Mm-hmm. And I just pray that, um, We, we just figure out... I wish I had the formula for that. Like, I think we got to stop being so prideful. Yeah. I don't prideful. know. I don't know the formula to stop being prideful. Just stop. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into not being prideful. And, and, yeah. the, and the thing is, is that you have to put in the work. Most people, specifically males, have a hard time not being prideful. And then they say, well, aren't I'm supposed to have pride. Well... There's a difference between having pride and being prideful. Mm-hmm. And and that's the education they're missing. So can you explain that, the difference between those two? Yeah, so having pride is having joy mm-hmm. in life with the environment you're in. Having joy. Joy meaning, it's not just happiness and giddiness. Joy meaning it is uplifting of the many and yourself. Prideful is singular. Means you only think about your happiness and be damned with everyone else. Wow. I think that's powerful. That's definitely something we should know and understand. But the selfishness and the prideful is is what I think a lot of people suffer from. They may not know the difference. Right. That's why I wanted you to kind of give us the the definition of both so that we understood. But yeah, I think you're right. That difference is caused wars... Mm-hmm. Destruction of so many things. Mm-hmm. If it can cause a country to fall, a nation to fall, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you think it's going? It's causing you to fall by even thinking it. Yeah. It's like um, um, uh, I, I had a guest on um, last night. Dale was talking about how many people lose opportunities by their by their ig- ignorant and pride by not asking for help. Yeah. 
so we have this show. Voices to be heard is about talking about abuse. It's about solving the not solving, but letting people know that they're not alone in the in the community of an yeah. abuse situation. Let your voices be known. Let it be heard. Say something. It's almost like if you see something, say something. But recognize things. Recognize when people are not in a place that is joy. Yeah. I'm not talking about sadness. We can be sad. We can even be depressed. We can even have our moments. But there's a difference of not having joy. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th- I think to your point, it is important that we recognize that. And that, and that goes for family and friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the longer we've been friends, I, I know you, you know, after a certain point. So I know if I'm not hearing from you as normal, you know, and, you know, we are all in a different place you know COVID this pandemic is here Mm -hmm. it's been an aggressive aggressive year so where we all have our own ways of dealing with um you know the things that are just going on in our everyday lives but regardless as a friend if we're close as a family member I know something's not right you know like either we share songs if we hear something you know our favorite song we'll share that i'm not i haven't gotten a, a song all week oh yeah something's not right you know just kind of kind of being in tune with my my friend because yeah. we've we've developed that relationship and if there's something wrong i'm not necessarily like pulling up to your house but i am going to call you you know maybe we text all the time but I'm going to call you this time because I need to hear your voice and figure it out. And I, I think that that is the, especially in this holiday season, I think it's Oof. important for us to check in, check in, check and in, check up and check it out. Yeah. Let's be very intentional about that. And I'm putting that, that challenge to myself as well. I'm going to be, make sure I'm very intentional on checking in with my friends um, I'll do, you know, different things on social media. You they post something, I'll just like it, you know, that type of thing. But I'm I'm just putting a, ch- a notice out there to my friends. I'm calling you. I'm going to call you, and I need to hear your voice. And if you don't call me, I'm going to pull up because I know where you live. You know, I just came up with uh, 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 an idea that just came bursting through my heart, and it just it, it came from... And I, this has nothing to do with police or federal or something reportable but we need health care checkups where people come to people's homes to check you out and, and if you and if someone be like oh uh uh-uh, uh no I'm not having these people come up my house to tell me what I am what I'm not and look at me and then report me they're going to send me to jail they're going to send me the, the um, ice and, and they're going to evict me We're so afraid of all those things I just said that we stay in such an unhealthy situation. Mm -hmm. So somehow we need to get out of that thought where it's totally disconnected from that, where people can get checked up on. Where we can send someone that's not going to send you to court, jail, or criminalize you. (laughs) I just learned that word from my show today. Being criminalized that just needs to check on your health. Yeah. Is that possible? Could we do that? We can definitely do that. I'm making a note. I mean, Ghostbusters yeah. did it with a with a with a with a station wagon, and they were like, they put that ghost on it like that, right? And they were like, we're solving problems. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if not, like, say we don't. If nothing else, I think we as individuals need to go ahead and make sure that we're doing. Like I said, I'm challenging everyone that's watching and listening to do checkups to be intentional about your checkups um sorry i don't know where i got this pen from but it's very <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all but uh but seriously let's be intentional about doing checkups in this season so it's the second day of december and within this week okay from so from now I think our, our next show is two weeks from today. Right. So in two weeks, I want to make sure we've yeah. all of our closest friends. So we've done checkups. 
we text them, call them, even if it's just, I'm just checking in to say, I love you. Yeah. And that, you know, like that, honestly, checking in and knowing that regardless what I'm going through, there's someone that just has me on their mind is encouragement and it, and it helps bring on a little more strength. I'm, I'm a witness that check-ins are very, very important and necessary so i i'm first on the challenge so everyone else listening watching i challenge you all to do the same and i'm also writing down to figure out how we can do this checkup caravan this checkup this mobile checkup you can name it (laughs) yeah (laughs) i eat hey and, you know, like I said, the Ghostbusters did it with a station wagon. So we could do, and this is a little bit, we're not even chasing ghosts. We're chasing real life people. Yeah, real. <laughs> this, is, this is real. So on that note, thank you. I'm so glad you're back, healthy. Um, and so you pray us out, please, Tamara, please. And cause Before I'm, I did pray, yeah. I just wanted to. Um, so Cap, I uh, mentioned it's a women's organization. Yeah. Each year, we normally do um, something that's called Cap Closet, and we'll get donations from our community um, of clothing, shoes, accessories, and we do a pop up shop each year. So normally this weekend would have been the weekend where we do Cap Closet, and unfortunately, due to COVID. <laughs> Um, it's just not a healthy thing for us to do this year, but um, we do want to do something and make sure that we're providing an opportunity for women to feel beautiful and to feel like themselves and to gain that encouragement. So my best friend came up with um, a, a wonderful um mantra or slogan for what we'll be doing so it's going to be called it's called beautifully kept and we're going to choose two women that we're going to do kind of like a makeover so we'll do we'll get their hair nails done um get them an attire so get them some attire and then do a photo shoot um and we also want to gift them with a um a packet or a basket with um, essentials and some things they may need, um, any donated clothes, um, depending on their size that we have, we want to kind of gift, give them a gift basket. So all of that to say, if there is anyone that is interested in being part or recommending someone um, that you think definitely needs that help and encouragement, um, please reach out to me. My my email address, I think, is here. Everyone can see it, but it's Tamara, T A M A R A, at shekept.org. We want to get um, all the submissions in so we can pick a couple ladies to enjoy this this day by December 15th. So, December 15th will be the deadline, and we'll have more information on our Facebook, Instagram, and website. But we want to make sure that we are kind of continuing our tradition and uplifting and supporting women. And we'll also be doing a couple other things for um, for this holiday season. But this one thing, beautifully kept, I wanted to make sure that I kind of pushed this out on the show. This is the first time I'm kind of talking about it. So I wanted to make sure we got that out. So um, that's that. Well, and I'll pray. Shame on you. We should do it every other week. We should be picking people. Um... By the time the next show, we pick the winner, and we just we'll keep doing that throughout the year. I think that's just something we should do and raise money for, and I'll make sure I we get that going because you know I, our women need to feel beautiful, and then our men need to feel beautiful. Maybe we can get a a a, a barber shop to help with men and their kept because when men aren't kept, you know you know men need health too. And they need yeah. to, they need to feel privileged and loved too. So we could do it both men and women. So that'd be great. We pick names and 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 they can send it into the inbox and the comments and let us know and say, hey, I I recommend this for this person. You can't recommend yourself. Don't be so damn selfish. You just <laughs> you, you you gotta you gotta mention someone else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I want I want to 
want to make sure that we are and and thank you i i would love men and women and let's and i do want to do this yearly so um this was one of the initiatives yeah. i wanted to do earlier in the spring um but we couldn't you know obviously because of the pandemic but i want to i wanted to make sure we were able to kind of fulfill that um vision that was implanted kind of in my heart so um yes let's do that so again tamara at she kept that org or you can send messages um i think dr paul you'll make sure if we get anything you'll yes for that absolutely and, um if you reach out to us there um or facebook instagram we'll have postings about it but we want to make sure we do this so i'll be pulling on and and you know kind of leaning on friends and family to help us with this initiative as normal. Our community is so supportive and I'm so honored and grateful to be part of such a uh, supportive community. So thank you in advance. So we're going to get prayed out, but thank everyone for listening to Voices to be Heard. And please, Tamara, pray us out. Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to share what you've given us, God. We ask that you bless all of those that are tuning in that are listening, God, may you provide um, just encouragement and wisdom, and may they be motivated by what they've heard this evening, and let our voices be those that are uplifting and encouraging, God. We thank you for the opportunity, God. Bless everyone in this season, God. Bless them, strengthen them, God. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, sister. I will, t- I will always talk to you later. Always. God bless. Woof. <sighs>